UK YouTubers. Back to Mars, back in Gale Crater. Another very quick game of Interplanetary Ice Play going on here, and we're looking at today Sol or MSL 1282 on the Gigapan by Neville Thompson. Thanks to him again for his uh, brilliant Gigapan work, making our lives a lot quicker and a lot easier when looking for anomalies on Mars. Part of the image we're looking at is the foreground by the rover's wheel here, okay? And we've got lots of weird little things like this sticking out. There's that one there. And there's a whole row of them over here. These weird structures in the uh, mudstone, okay? Now, they look fairly normal. Um, but if you start looking all the way along the, the bottom of this image, there's some really odd-looking things here. Now, this was brought to my attention by um, someone on the Mars Moon Space Photo Zoom Club, okay, on Facebook. And the guy is called Eric Ellison and posted these images via his mobile device, uh, which was back in, what was the date? Let's have a look here. October 28th, so a while back now. Okay, and you've got this long structure here sticking out, and there's a couple of them here that kind of look like, well, they, this one looks like a bone. There's another closer image of that there. Um, but what strikes me about these uh, possible ventifacts, well, they probably are ventifacts. In other words, they're eroded structures from the wind and, and, and wind and sand erosion. Okay, what strikes me is how amazingly strong this material seems to be. Now, when you look at the close-ups I've got here, I've got his images here. I've taken the images and just enhanced them a little bit. There's that one. This one is weird. Uh, it seems to have a handle sort of shape here, sticking out, okay. Um, these were weird. This one is incredibly thin, just here. See how thin it looks? Look at the shadow there, look how thin that gets. Okay, this one looks like a bone, an animal bone, with a bit of something stuck on the end of it. Very strange, very strange indeed. Now, I'm not saying these are bones or, or whatever, I'm just saying they look like them. Of course, I can prove either way. But judging by all the skeletons and, and skulls and everything that people are finding in this area, wouldn't surprise me one little bit if they were. Um, but the main one I, I spotted um, in this area, first of all, I'll show you these because these were interesting, I thought, anyway. These look fairly normal, these shapes sticking out. And you've got a nice shadow showing the actual shape of the... Or they're not, well, not even objects, really. They're, they're structures, OK? That one there, which is like a sort of hook shape there. That was pretty cool, that one. But then I found this one. And I'll show you it. This is unenhanced clip straight from the Gigapan, okay? Got this one here, and it's shaped like a mushroom or some kind of weird object. Now, to me, this looks organic. Um, it looks like a kind of mushroom with the neck of the mushroom here and the head of the mushroom there. Now, of course, bits of this may have broken off. This could be dried. This could be even living now. And one thing I did think of recently um, about the Curiosity rover is that it's running over the ground, and it has been for years now, driving over things like this on a regular basis. Now, is it possible that some of these are actual mushrooms or fungi, and that when the rover drives over them, it releases spores into the atmosphere, thus spreading more fungi or, or causing more fungi to grow further downwind from the rover, okay? This is possible. And it may be the case that, that there wasn't any life in this area at all until the rover came along. Now, the rover's quite large. Its wheels are breaking up the surface all the time and they're cracking the rocks in half and uh, exposing um, r rock and material that's below uh, the surface on a regular basis, okay? Is it possible that there are some mushrooms in this area or fungi that have been disturbed and, like I just said, are spreading their spores throughout the area? Mushrooms can grow very quickly if the conditions are right at the right time of year and there's the right amount of moisture and warmth. Um, some types of mushroom only live for a matter of a few days. Some have been, you know, some may only live for uh, a few hours uh, at a time and die off very, very quickly, very small mushrooms. 
and there are types of fungi on Earth that do this. They, they're very transient plants. They don't. Uh, there are some that last for, for years and years and years, but there are other types that, that don't, that are very, very transient. So, is that possible? We also have this one here. I mean, how the hell is that staying on the end of there? You have this blob type structure on the end of this, and if, if you look at the shadow here, look how thin that is. That's got to be no more than a, probably a millimeter or two thick, just there. Now, what sort of material would be strong enough to, to hold that? Now, this may well be very light material and uh, have a low density, and, and the fact that there's much lo lower gravity on, on Mars, only 40% of Mars, um, approximately, um, Perhaps that means that, that these things don't break off in the same way as they would on Earth, but I just found these really interesting, and, and they do pose some interesting questions about the rover. And you have one here, I've got it highlighted. Now, this may just be a, a, a venti fat sticking out of the, uh, the edge of this mudstone here, okay? This one. Let's go to the, this one here. But you've got the wheel of the rover. Now, that got me thinking. What if some of these grew out the side of this structure here, this mudstone structure, as a result of the rover just dis disturbing other areas downwind, and then the spores blowing in front of the rover, and then starting these little things to grow. I mean, possibly not, these may well just be natural eroded structures, but it does open a few possibilities that the rover itself may actually be causing life on Mars, and actually very, on a, on a macro scale, um, terraforming the surface as it drives over it and, and disturbing these small little possible fungi, okay? So that was it for this one. I'll, I'll have a few cl close-ups and clips in at the end in, in about 30 seconds. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you soon.